So, Katina, uh, how vulnerable are internet surveillance cameras to illegal hacking? There have been a few recent high profile media reports of hacked surveillance cameras in people's homes and other premises, and unauthorized streaming of surveillance video to the internet. It's so prevalent, Justin, that we think that three out of five of those IP based cameras are actually hackable with not much know how. It just takes a hacker to get to an installation guide, for example, and to see that default password of which not many of us actually bother changing when we install the webcams to begin with. And what you find, we now have companies specializing in not only Internet of Things, but Internet of Webcams targeting these devices, which collect video footage from various parts of the house or the frontage of the home and streaming this live 24 seven, 365 days a year, which is just unbelievable. Mm. Mm. Well, that's very disturbing. And, and what sort of things can bad actors do with the unauthorized video? Well, currently they're using this unauthorized video for a variety of reasons. The first one is to basically demonstrate that these IOT devices, Internet of Things devices, are in fact insecure. That without two-factor authentication, they're open season for anyone who wishes to penetrate these home systems. In fact, it's not just for the home. We're also seeing this in business where employers may be conducting workplace surveillance remotely, or they may be actually looking at their assets when they're not there, or they may be looking at even a 3D printer as it's going through its uh, creation of a design, ensuring that the filament is not wasted. And so we're seeing thefts occur because people can study locations. And while the location of the IP address is not that accurate often to the number on the street level, Often we have identifiable information like the street number. We have things like a number plate and a vehicle that you can cross match and actually find out where someone's living exactly. Mm, that sounds very disturbing. And I understand that this problem is not limited to surveillance cameras, but other Internet of Things devices, for example. Can you talk about what other devices that might be vulnerable to this sort of attack? So increasingly we're installing all these different IoT devices and providing access to them via a central hub. For example, you might have a Google Nest, uh, which links your Amazon Alexa, your front door lock, which is an automatic digital lock, not one of those old fashioned locks. You may have a thermostat, you may have a smart fridge, you may have air conditioning units, and all of these things, once they're controllable via hubs, all you've got to really do is penetrate a single IoT device to actually get to the back end hub. And then what you do basically is assume that people use the same password for every single IoT device if it's been changed and if it hasn't been publicly compromised in the past. And so all of a sudden you can do these unbelievable things like turn lights on and off. If you're using Philip Hue kinds of devices where you're setting the mood to each room in different color. So imagine turning a, a room pitch blue or pitch black or turning off a light when someone wants it to be open. There's a real chilling effect with that. Or instead of allowing someone to open their front door when they need access, ensure that digital lock is closed and locked. Or the opposite, don't allow someone to get out of their premises. Or turn off the smart fridge and let all the food spoil. Uh, so have endless scenarios, a even a Amazon Ring was found to be compromised last November 2019. And what you've got there all of a sudden is this really, you know, this, this melting pot of disasters waiting to happen if someone really wants to penetrate a particular location. Hmm. And besides the perpetrators, who do you think should be or is liable for this sort of intrusion of privacy? Well, certainly, as you say, the hackers uh, need to be accountable. Uh, some people purport to be ethical hackers. They're doing this in the good of consumers to raise awareness, you know. And the issue is when people do go to police stations, for example, women who have been stalked, uh, cyber stalked, that is, via their cameras or IoT devices, and they can hear voices come through the household because someone has penetrated an Amazon Alexa or a Google Nest device. The police are not really resourced to take care of cybercrime like that. And so who's accountable? Manufacturers certainly are accountable and responsible for better needs in terms of security by design. So often what we want to do is have a surveillance protection device streaming live footage 
to someone remotely, but in fact, that same data can be intercepted by someone else. So we need two-factor authentication. We need people to say, you know, manufacturers, please take responsibility. Yes, we are aware as consumers, but in the time that we may be locked out of our own premises, if you allow us to have two-factor authentication, a password, and the use of a phone to unlock, then most likely we won't be vulnerable to being hacked. Mm. And do you think consumers need more protection? And what would the increased legal protection for consumers look like? I think very few people speak out for consumers. Usually it's non-government organisations who raise the alarm bells, basically call for amendments to the Privacy Act of Australia, amendments to trespass laws, amendments to uh, interception and access laws, to storage device laws, uh, to surveillance devices and listening laws, to workplace surveillance laws. Um, they are common ways that we've gone ahead and tried to protect consumers. So if something is found to be illegal, uh, a consumer can go and uh, find some justice in what's happened to them. But often, um, there is no way for them to be protected. Um, they can certainly make complaints. They can certainly raise the awareness to law enforcement agencies. But we're really looking for manufacturers to step up and to also be jointly accountable because this is not just a consumer problem. It's not just a buyer beware. We have this proliferation now of what's purported to be 30 billion devices by 2030. And so with the increase and the revenue being earned by these devices, we've got to start putting back things into the design process to ensure that they're more robust.